Hi everybody, it's Amy and you have found Amy Loves Crochet. Thank you so much for clicking on my video to spend a little time with me today. Whether you are, are a subscriber or this is the very first time you've seen me, thank you so much for your time. I do appreciate you. So I wanted to go over some things that I finished, but before I do that, I want to talk about what I'm calling my Every Stitch Cowl. Um, I used Burnett Pop for this, as you saw on my thumbnail. It's 100% acrylic, a worsted weight 4. They suggest a 5 millimeter hook to go with it, and it's about 280 yards. So if you have an equivalent yarn, you can get about the same effect. Um, so this is how much I have left from my cake for my skein. It is a one, one hit wonder. <laughs> and um, look how pretty the colorway is. There are some oranges and some pinks and then like this maroony color that shows up in there. It's really, really pretty. Um, so what I did was I just did a big old chain and wrapped it around twice to see where it might be. Um, I knew I wanted an even number of stitches because um, in a lot of cases you can do, a, you know, chain one, skip one. Like in the very first row here, what I, well, the first row was a single crochet, but then I did a double crochet, chain one, skip one to have these spaces. So I thought anytime um, you might work with some different stitches changing up, it's good to go with a multiple of two so that you can do a skip one space if you wanted to. So that's what I did. I just started down here with the chain. Like I said, I, I connected, long chain, connected it, single crochet in every row, I mean, in, in every stitch. And then I did um, the double crochet, chain one, skip one. I started with that. And then I went, um, I did another row of single crochet after that. And then I did a row of Vs. So here's single crochet, here's double crochet, chain one, skip one, here's single crochet. And then I did a V stitch. Um, and then I thought about my stitch count. <laughs> and I didn't wanna do a single in every stitch because then I did extras with the the space that's in the V. So when I went back around for my single crochet row after the V stitches, I only put them in the top of the double crochets. I didn't, I ignored the, the space that you put in a double V, I mean in a V stitch. So then I did a single crochet again. And then look at Amy did treble criss crosses. I think these are double trebles, treble crisses. No, treble criss crosses. There we go. <laughs> I was looking at something else and it called for a a double treble and I was like whoa how many times are you yarning over for that um, so after the treble crisscrosses which is a big step for me because if you've seen some of my other videos you know that I hate that stitch but I did it all on my own and I did it all the way around and I'm so happy so then I, uh, another row of singles and then here I did a row of doubles and then here I like to do um, is it the right side up I always hold my stuff upside down for you guys um, I do a double crochet. How does that even look like that? There we go. <laughs> In this maroon kind of color. Um, those are two half doubles together. And then I skip a space in between. So um, a lot of times it looks like a little heart, but this was a really, really big hook. Did I even say that yet? I used an N 10 millimeter hook. And sometimes when you get up into the MNOP, you're, it's a two for hook. They try, they try to say it's an MN, a 910, or, you know, you're sharing a letter or you're sharing a number with somebody. And then that always confuses me. So I, if I'm going to use it, um, if I'm going to do a pattern that calls for a bigger hook, I want to find specifically that hook. So I reach for this one because it does say that it's a 10 millimeter. But I am not in love with how short the base is here. Um, this hook feels very big and very bulky and not at all smooth and precise. Um, it, I, I wanted to make it super big and holy like this. I wanted to have a lot of air coming through it because a lot of times for me, I want to stop the wind, but I don't need a whole big thick layer of something. So something, you know, a cowl or a scarf that has a whole bunch of holes, you know, it's kind of more lacy like this. It's a little more drapey like this. I prefer that. So that was my every stitch cowl that I made with my Burnett Pop. And I'm happy to clear one more skein off my shelf so that my little Burnett Pop section, I have one more full cake of hot chocolate and then it's all just scraps. Um, in the very beginning, when I started to buy up a bunch of um, variegated 
cakes, I would get very confused between the Bernat Pop and the Karen cakes in the very beginning. I didn't know which ones I had, so I had to make very specific separation between them so that I wouldn't get them confused. But now I kind of know them a little bit better. Okay, so I'm working on a big thing that I don't have um, filmed yet. So I will come back to that and tell you about that later. But in the meantime, when I was working on that, I needed a break. And so I made up some more Divine Hatch. You guys know how much I love those. I showed you this one in the Tweed that I just made the other day. And um, this one that is uh, from that Royal Batik Zeman that is such great yarn from overseas. Um, so that was in the blue. And then um, this was just a scrap cake. This is in this um, Craft Smart. Craft Smart. It's Michael's um, Economy brand. And I absolutely love it. I absolutely love it. I think it's a great yarn. And this is one of my favorite colorways. So this was just a scrap. And I really, really enjoy that. So I'm going to go ahead and put Ruby Stedman's link down below. Um, a lot of people, a lot of different people do this hat. But um, I will always go back to Ruby Stedman because she's who I saw do it first many years ago. So um, I also wanted to try it. I've told you guys about my big twist. This is a single skein that I have. Um, this is an old, old discontinued yarn. I mean, they still do big twist, but they don't make these anymore. And I really, really love not just the colorway, but the strength and the, um, the composition of the strand. It is really, really nice. So I wanted to start to do a divine hat with that. Um, and so this is how it's working up. But it's it's a four, but it's a really, really thick four. So I decided I'm probably going to frog this. I don't like how it was turning out. And I don't know how big, how much bigger than the regular four yarn is it's going to be. Because um, it is a really, really thick four. So I think I'm going to frog that and put it to the side. Gosh, it is so pretty though, isn't it? This is called um, Gemstone Stripes, Premium Gemstone Stripes. So I thought that was pretty, but yeah, so I think I'm going to frog that. Um, but I did also want to show, um, I had gone through a bunch of just my stripe yarn, and um, I've got a couple of single cakes left. So I wanted to know how much I could, you know, if I could work up a divine hat with that. And I have this little bit left, but I only have two rows um, in the brim and the pattern calls for three rows in the brim but still on the other but this also is a much thicker yarn I think it is much thicker than a standard um, four like here's a different four I've got right here Oops. look how much thicker that one is it's almost like I almost consider just my stripe a bulky so I was a little bit afraid to do this hat because I thought it was going to be so much bigger um, and again I ran out I'm not going to have enough to do the final border, but it is a little bit bigger, so it still fits just as nice. So if you have any of that, just my stripe, this is a great pattern to work up one cake all together like that. Um, something else that, you know, not necessarily a fail because I really didn't get anywhere with it, but sometimes I'll just grab a skein and start to do a C to C. And I already worked on this yarn, um, some of these cakes. This is called Mint Swirl from Sweet Roll. I'm not liking how this is turning out. I'm going to go ahead and frog this and put it back. But I just want to talk to you guys about frog and stuff. It's not a big deal, you know. Get back to mm, something that's making you feel a little bit better about the yarn that you're working with or the pattern that you're working with. I love a C2C. I'll do them all day long. But I just didn't like how the colors were working out in this. So, um, yeah, that's going to be a frogger as well. But, so a couple of hats to show you. I wanted to show you my Every Stitch Cal. I really like that. I think I'm going to make that one again. Um, I think it's so pretty. Now, I'm not going to be a pattern maker. You're not ever going to see, like, patterns come from me. But if I'm just winging it and I'm just going to throw some stitches together, I'll show you guys what that looks like. Okay, okay, okay. Let me go grab some. <clears throat> Okay, so I've shown you guys this pillow that I did before, right? And this side of the pillow I did with um, single crochet, chain one, skip one, single crochet, chain one, skip one. But when I came back around the next row, instead of just going down into the chain space, I actually went down and grabbed the stitch that was below it. So it is super, super tight in here. You can't really pull that apart. Um, I did the first panel 
and then it kind of squished up and scrunched up and got all tight and together. <laughs> and I didn't want to do that on the back as well because I knew that the pillow cover wouldn't fit anymore. So I wanted to just try regular single crochets and there's tons of spaces. You can see the pillow, not happy. So as you know, I put a little panel in on the side so I can close it up and be done with it. Um, but then I still have a ton of this yarn down here. So what am I going to do with it? And I showed you guys a, a cylinder pillow that I had. I think it was 14 by five, something like that. I made the joke you could bonk your brother with a pillow. Look what I did. <laughs> I'm so excited. I did the same stitch where it's a single crochet, chain one, skip one. And then in the, when I came back around, I went down into the stitch and grabbed it. So like this blue stitch here, it should be up a little bit higher and it would allow for a little bit of spacing, but there's no spaces. This sucker is solid. So I made one end and just, you know, started in the round with, I did these with half double crochets and then just made it as big as I wanted to go. And I talked to myself about color controlling or not color controlling. I had a whole bunch of scraps um, from when I made the other pillow, all different sizes, all different color pieces, <laughs> all of this. And I was like, am I just going to use it until it's gone? Am I going to, you know, tie on 50 million times? Am I going to carry the yarns all the way up so I don't have to tie off and tie in, but it's on the inside. So I really don't have to hide my ends. So I just, I went with a round, I lined her up and then here, like uh, normally on the baskets where you go into just a back loop only for the bottom stitch to give it a foot like that. Um, I wanted to go ahead and have the entire stitch. So I did not go into the back loop. I went into the formation of the loop from the back side. So then when I was going to attach this one, I'm like, how am I going to make that same appearance? And I kind of sat here and stared at it for a little while and sat with my needle in hand. What am I going to do? How am I going to attach this? So I left it a little bit open so I could show you guys how um, these stitches back here is what I'm going to grab into. And then that leaves the entire face of the stitch showing. See here? The entire face of the stitch is showing because I went into part of the back of this. There's a, a single loop back here that I'm grabbing, this diagonal guy. And so I wanted to leave that open so I can show you. Um, actually, I'll, come, I'll go ahead and come down to, to tabletop and show you how I'm going to attach this last little bit. So here's what I'm trying to show you as I go into the back of the stitch not even the back loop, but the back of the stitch itself. It pulls the whole face of the stitch forward. So you can see that is on the outside of the rim here. So when you go in, what I'm doing is just grabbing this stitch here. As you can see, that's where I went through for this one. So on this next stitch, I'm going to grab right here. And I'm going to grab right here. There's a seam to the pillow. I keep stabbing into that seam. <laughs> So you're going to pick up this one, whoops, and you're going to pick up this one, just go right into the seam, I mean right into the stitch, Now you know when you're working from the outside to close up the inside, it's there's going to be one at the end that's not going to look quite right. But out of the whole pillow, that's the only one that's going to be, that's the only one that's going to have a stitch on the outside. So I think that's going to be pretty good. And if, you know, somewhere along the line you got two or maybe you didn't grab one, you might have to grab a couple of extra here at the end. Here's my last behind the behind the stitch. See, here's my stitch. And I'm going to flip him over and grab that diagonal. And then go right into the stitch. And pick that one up. So there we go. We are all connected. I think I'll put one more in there just to give him a double strength. And then I'll just put a knot on that and sew the blue into the blue and I will be all done. All right, yay. 
Alrighty guys, I really appreciate your time today. Thank you so much for sitting with me and chatting over some crochet. I hope that you've seen something that you would like to try or a colorway that maybe you have that you didn't know what it was gonna look like or, you know, one hit wonders, Try just try it. Just start working with it. And if you don't like what's coming out, frog it up, you know? It's still gonna work as a cold barrier. That's what it's all about, right? Crafting is all about our our um, creativity and, and what we're going to do with the yarn and with the pattern. So I hope, hope that you've enjoyed your time with me today and I hope that you'll come back to see me again. Thank you so much. Have a wonderfully blessed day. Bye-bye.